So I'm Aidan Saunders, and it's my colleague Deepak. Uh, we're both from uh, Veda Consulting. We're going to be talking about using Civi Event. So let's just see quite where we're at with Civi Event. So who, who's, a, if you like, a Civi Event ninja? Knows what they're doing with it and all the rest of it. Uh, sort of. Okay, good. Um, who's fairly confident, used it a bit, and um, looking to sort of, if you like, maybe pick up a few tips along the way? A few people. Okay, who's not used Civi Event really at all? Okay, and who is basically completely new to Civi? Okay, good. <laughs> so what we're going to do is to, I've uh, got a few slides here, we'll talk a bit about Civi Event, what it is, how it fits into the rest of the system, uh, and then get into a demo. Um, about you, I actually like seeing these things happen for real as opposed to just seeing slides about them. Um, there's always the slight danger that it doesn't quite work as you'd hoped, but we'll deal with that if it happens. And so on. So let's get started. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of what we're doing. Um, okay, can we let whoever's in at the back, those doors have an interesting habit of closing and then not being able to open them from outside. So. <laughs> Just need to let people in. <laughs> okay, so what is a Civi event? Um, this time round, event is a fairly straightforward, normal use of the word, as opposed to a sort of geeky kind of technical use of event. So it's basically a meeting or a conference or any kind of gathering of people that you, as an organisation, that you organise. They can be free events, they can be fee-paying events, they can be, uh, you can have online joining, or you can have them just as sort of back office admin staff things, um, as an yeah, improvement of sticking them on your, your spreadsheet kind of thing. Um, they can send email reminders automatically, they can have discounts of various sorts, so if you want to have a sort of, you know, sign up by this date for a discount, you can do that sort of thing. It also integrates with uh, Civi Discounts, which gives you, as an extension for, for Civi, that lets you do more complex discounting things. So if you want sort of you know, codes, coupon codes, and that sort of thing, you can do that through Civi Discounts. Also integrates with the Civi Volunteer extension, if you need volunteers to help run your event. <coughs> um, Discounts and volunteer are whole sort of separate pieces in their own right, but it's just a touch on say they are there. Yeah. You can do that too. Yeah. Sorry, whatever that question was was lost in the. <laughs> sure. So the question was, can events be free or fee and and or fee paying? So there's a choice there. I guess there's options in that. So as we start getting into this, you'll see there are lots of options and lots of flexibility, uh, which can make it a bit intimidating to, you know, there's all these different things to look at. But I'm going to say, just get started with it, experiment, see how it goes. Um, it does tie into a whole load of other features within Civi. So there's the Civi contribute side of things for all the, the donations aspect of stuff. Uh, there's Civi reports, so we can get reports of uh, who attended the events, what money was raised through those events, and so on. Uh, ties into Civi Mail, if you want to send out you know, mails about the events. Ties into Civi Campaigns, um, if you want to maybe sort of track uh, things in a different sort of way, maybe a, a series of activities across a, uh, related to maybe some sort of project. You might use campaigns that way. Um, payment processes, so if you want to take your thing by PayPal or Stripe or whatever is the payment processes piece. Geocoding and mapping. Uh, so if you want to produce a map of your event, you need to figure those things. You might get into profiles about what information we're collecting from people when they register, um, which could be standard fields, might be custom fields. So a lot of these pieces of, of Civi, um, on the one hand, if you're completely new to it, there's all these different bits that you might need to delve into. You thought you were just dealing with events, but in fact, there's all these other bits. Conversely, 
if you've used those other bits, you'll find they all sort of come together, as it were, within Civi Event. And so if you've got, for example, PayPal already set up, that's great. You don't need to do it again. It's there as part of you know, the system. There's all the usual sources of help. Um, the on-screen help, manual, wiki, stack exchange, and so on. Um, on-screen help huh, is, is worth actually looking at and clicking. Um, it, it is written by people who actually want to try and help you use the system. Um, <clears throat> so, and sometimes it's <coughs> very useful, and we'll see that as we go through. So um, we'll look at some of those bits. So what we're going to do is to set up just a very simple event initially for back office use. So no online stuff, no payments, no whatever. Add some participants. We can look at some reports, look at how we print name badges, look at reminders, uh, and then go on and make that a bit more complex. So we'll add in a piece to allow online um, logging, uh, uh, online um, registration, look at payments. And then there's a watch of things down here, discounts, price sets, um, personal campaign pages, custom fields, waitlists, templates, recurring events, all that stuff. Um, clearly, there's a lot there that we could get into. We only have an hour. Um, so once we've got through this first bit, uh, I think we'll then look and say, OK, so what are the particular bits that people really want to take a look at? And see we go from there. OK? So if I switch around here. Right, there is a fairly typical install with the um, sample data for Civi loaded in there, and this is on a 4.6 system. So all fairly standard sort of stuff. Okay. So let me go and sit down. So dashboards. Uh, sorry, events, sorry. Um, dashboard, first on the list. Um, most of the stuff to do with events you'll find either listed down here, uh, or once we get into some of these, then uh, particularly on the, the event configuration, there's a lot of different um, pieces there. OK, so let's come straight into creating a new event. And saying there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of options. So a lot of these pieces, for a start, we're just going to ignore and leave them at, at the defaults as they are. So the bits that we really need to fill in are the bits that got the red star. It's required. So we need to say what type of event it is. Uh, again, has so many of these things. There's the little um, option there, to, uh, spanner icon if you need to edit those, if you need a different type of event, you can do that and you can set up a new event type. So we'll, <coughs> we'll choose it's a meeting. Uh, default role. Um, mostly people coming to this are attendees. And give it a title. So let's suppose we were trying to set this up to record uh, the event tonight, the Civi party. So we'll call it that. We can have a summary, description of stuff in here. Um, we can have more description in here. Let's put a start date. So it's defaulting to now. The event is, uh, da, da, da. the event is, don't know what time it is. is it? Sorry? 5.15 p.m. <laughs> 5.15, and we'll make it p.m. Are the calendars always American, or is that just in Microsoft? Uh, no, it's just in the default install. They are. <laughs> um, OK. So we'll do that, and let's just leave that with all the standard defaults there. Okay. 
the location for it. Um, so we'll see. Uh, don't know where we are. We're about there, aren't we? Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, and save. In fact, leave that save and done. So it takes us back to our event dashboard. We've got so the civvy party here. Um, if we very basic listing for it, so it's just showing us the name, the brief description we put in, uh, the date and location. So by itself, nothing particularly exciting to look at. But just as that is, um, we do have, you know, it's still kind of useful just um, in its own right as that. So if we, uh, let's take, uh, oh, this person who we created in just a previous session, um, <coughs> and <coughs> we'd like them to come to our event. So we can say, we're going to add a registration for that event. The event is the city party. Nothing else necessary, and we'll save it. So we've now got this person registered to our event. Um, from there, uh, we could we could say, for example, we've got a bunch of people we want to register, uh, so we can do any sort of search we want to find them. And for these purposes, I've just we'll choose I don't know these people, and we will do a mass registration. That wasn't what I meant. We'll register all of these for this event. So we're coming to contacts, add those contacts to an event. Because we could have done any, any search there, whether it's for a group, whether it's for a particular criteria, whatever. Um, <coughs> we're saying, what is that? It's the civic party event. Uh, they're all attendees, that's fine. Do we want to send them a confirmation mail? Well, maybe we do, maybe we don't. Uh, we'll say no for this one, and we'll save that. Okay. So, coming back to our event dashboard, we're seeing now for our civvy party, we've got its date, we've got seven people who are registered, attended, pending, partially, blah, 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 et cetera, and attendee, which was the bit that we were looking for. So if we have, uh, you know, just in terms of, of keeping track of who's coming, um, it's it's all it's already there and starting to be to be useful. Um, if we want to make further changes, we can come back through into influence settings. Okay. So coming back to that one get down to the right slide. So we've added some participants uh, there. Let's look at some reports, see what we've got. So again, back under the events menu, we've got event reports. Series of different things here. So we'll take a look at our participant list. And by default, that's showing us all the different events we've got. So we want to uh, filter that and only show the particular event, which is the city party. Uh, and well, so preview. Sure. You see the, the sort of filters at the top there? Yep. Is that, is that a fairly new functionality? Because I don't think I'm seeing that on the installation I've got in 4.4.5. The, the layout has changed. <coughs> um, but reports have always had that sort of filter capability, okay. but it was there was a report criteria and report settings tab you need to expand out, and yeah. it's it, it's in there. So filter capability has been there, but the layout is new. Yeah. yeah. Actually, most of them uh, was there, but it was like a long screen with all the settings mm. on one just one. Thing. Yeah, it's much nicer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So do you like, um, just yeah that. Went into the report, you went into participants list, mm -hmm. and then 
And then, then you have to go to filters to say, I just want this one. I yes. don't want everybody. Yes. Yeah. So it's ever coming to anyone. That's right. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so within that filters, um, we could also, they're all just attendees, but if we had different roles there, for example, we could just pull out our speakers, say, if we got one, yeah, uh, and so on. So we can filter in that sort of way. Can I just ask, <coughs> once an event has happened and it's over, does it still appear on that list for, that you have to sort of remove from the filter, or does it get after? So if you come back to the... Uh, so it's showing you upcoming events. Um, if though you've got something that is coming up uh, that so if it's if it's still there but you don't want it to show up anywhere, you can say it's not active. And that sort of you know. it's still there. Um, and you can tick that to enable it again, but it's, it's not showing up in the searches yet. And most of the times on CD screens, if, if you also have end date, mm -hmm. and CD knows it's expired, then when you search for the event, it won't show up in the list. Yeah. 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 Okay. <coughs> so we've got, uh, so that was a report that we've seen there. Uh, We'll come back to reports a bit later on, when possibly when we've got some uh, we've got some paid event, um, registrations in there. Uh, we can you just see briefly. There's income summary, income details. So you're looking at income that's come from this event, or from other events, or from groups of events. Okay, uh, coming back to our event where we were. Let's come back once again. Pick up this. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so there's various different ways of, of, of that showing up. So, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. let me come back to dashboard. So, see here, we've got couple of different um, icons. Let me just pop those up in different tabs so you can see those. Uh, so that's just showing us a listing of those events. Uh, If you're using Dr Drupal, Drupal views, views yeah, yeah <coughs> then you can have it show up as a calendar format within there. Um, so, but so by default, as it were, by, by not doing anything in particular, uh, these are already there. So there's just an HTML listing, which you could put wherever you like. Uh, there's an RSS feed, which again, you can do what you like with. Uh, so there's options there, and then... And then the iCal, click that, or that, those... Yeah, those are the yeah. feeds, yeah. Those are the feeds. These are the feeds you could import directly in your Google Calendar or Viewer. Right. So if you have that set up, then it would come up. It would go into those calendars? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you can. So once you import it, you could... So these feeds would provide you with the latest mm -hmm. uh, upcoming events. You could actually so import or update it to Google Calendar. You could have some script which pushes these, okay. and mm -hmm. then you'll have all, them, all of them updated. Otherwise, it's, if, if it's manual, then it's only the, at the point when you import the result. Okay, yes. Yeah. Excuse me, which version of Studio are you using? This is 4.6. Yes. 4.6. 9. Uh, yeah, so. Okay. Uh, 
Right. So we'd got that. Uh, what are we going to do? We were going to look at, that's right. Uh, so we go to our list of participants. We can get to in various different ways. We could have done a find, all those links there that just take us straight through to our, our list of participants. From there, uh, we can do various different things. Um, so again, a bunch of different options. We can add them to a group if we want of particular people there. We can change them. So maybe after the event, we want to change them from um, registered to attended. Uh, we can delete, we can export, create a smart group. Um, we can prevent, we can print event name badges. So let's show that one. Uh, okay, there's one format currently set up. And there we should have. Um, there we go, good. Uh, and there we have our, our name badges. Um, sized for yeah, the particular format we'd, we'd said there. Um, again, lots of things you can configure, so if you don't want them to look quite like that, there's options to go and change, uh, change the, the layout of those badges. You can add in a barcode, you can add in a picture, you can, <coughs> you know, etc. A bunch of different things you can do which say, you know, it's there, and you can do that. Um, can I just ask, sometimes in our printed badges, although every contact has a prefix on it, some come out on the badges and some don't. Do you know why that would be? Is it a bug thing or...? I... Go back into the contacts and put the prefix in again to make sure they can... Yeah, I guess... Line. Sometimes... The, Sometimes you end up with a prefix not actually in the prefix field. Um, so if it's got included with the first name, for example. So it, it, it then sort of, you know, it sort of looks right, but doesn't. But Sometimes it's not added to the user's name. It also depends how you take the input into the system, how are the contacts going in. Like, is the prefix really required here on the front end or somewhere on the profile of where we're taking the input? So if you think that it's very required, yeah, then yeah, just make it required and yeah. then it will always be there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions while we're there? No? Okay. So that's that's the name badges. Okay. Okay, so that was that's in by default, that particular one. Okay. So I didn't set that up. Um, so, but, well, my first but, question is, how can I change yep. what's on the song badge? So, under Sorry, where is it? Layout. Badge layouts down there at the bottom. Is that it? All the way down. Yeah. Third from the bottom. Is that? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking at it. Can't it's see it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so there's that one badge layout that's there. Uh, you can add a new one if you wish, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can edit the existing one. So this is using display name, um, current employer. Uh, if so if you, I don't know, if you want a barcode on it, if, you want, if you've got a picture of them and you want to include that, you could do that. If you want uh, your logo, you can have a, an image coming in there. So again, flexibility for how you configure that. Uh, if your label format isn't an Avery 5395, which I'm sure you're all very familiar with, um, you can change it to whatever it should be and so on. But you can create your own formats as well in a separate area. Yeah. So, okay. I think again, that's that's one of the things I think that's got a bit easier and been moved into menus. So there's there's more you can do through these admin menus as opposed to needing to go go fiddle things behind the scenes. 
so we can add a new layout here, um, and so on. So that's a new one as opposed to uh, amending. Because there was only one and default in the system, it didn't really ask for which batch do you want to use. Okay, reminders. Let's take a look at reminders. So if we, um, again, we'll come back to uh, managing our events, or dashboard, doesn't make much difference. Um, so if we want to send a reminder, we could set this up so that we add a reminder, um, so we want to send this to everybody who is, uh, who is registered um, with the title of um, <coughs> um, when do we want it to go? So we, well, now we want it to go two hours before the event start date. So again, it knows what the event start date is. We don't need to put that in again. That was the time that we configured. Um, as you see again, options we can do it um, you know, various time before. If, on the other hand, you wanted to send a sort of follow-up thing afterwards, a thanks for <coughs> attending, you could have it as after the event. Um, again, a bunch of different options, uh, some of which, you know, are fairly obvious. Uh, your message in there, and save. That will then have got us set up with a reminder. Uh, so we'll, let's say we want to do this and we want to say um, subject, uh, don't forget. Um, and so we've now got our reminder set for, for that event. So all this is just from that very basic event configuration that we did. So it's more from a sort of back office use of uh, it's there, it's happening, and um, people are ringing, maybe they're emailing. So in that sense, quite low tech um, options for doing it. Um, but again, it's you know, sometimes a useful way of getting started with events. So rather than having them exposing them out on your website to people, you can have them, you know, that you're using them as it were, within your office side of things to get familiar with them and quite how they work and, and so on. Having said that, let's not stop there. So let's come back to these tabs. So event settings, uh, sorry, info and settings, um, that lot doesn't change much. We don't do much for that. Uh, location. So again, uh, if we want to include a map, then we need the mapping and geolocation stuff set up. Um, so at the moment, I think if I save that. Are you missing a city? Uh, we could put a city in. That would be good. Thank you. Um, now, from the look of this, the wireless isn't connecting, so we're not going to get <coughs> that there. But um, just to show that one, mapping and geocoding. People are familiar with the mapping and geocoding stuff? In theory. Um, in theory. OK, so in practice, it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you're not doing, so you go Google and you go Google um, or Yahoo. Um, you can get hit by limits on these things if you're doing a lot. So, uh, and it talks about here an API key and all that stuff. But for basic simple use, just do those. And then, where was I? Come back to our events once again. Um, Uh, 
and say, so we, from here, uh, if my network was actually connecting, and I imagine there's just a few too many people trying to get onto here, then when we save it, it would populate this latitude longitude box, um, at which point it will then show on the map if we've configured the map. And the map itself isn't configured on the location page, but on the information page, which was our first tab. OK, slight pause here as it's going off to try and geocode that address <laughs> via the network that it can't get to. Come on. Yeah, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Same as sitting here looking at a blank screen, yeah. Um, so uh, it's all great um, when we sort of register our people for the event, uh, and um, they're sort of part of it. Uh, but how do we invite people to tell us, to basically RSVP, to just tell us whether they're coming or not? Uh, is there an option to do that? So that basically the status of the participants is defined by them themselves, in a way, whether they are yeah, so I guess you've kind of got two, two approaches. One is you just send out the link to them all and say, hey, please register. <coughs> a little different. And the other is you, you can add them to the event with a status of pending, say. <coughs> uh, and then when they come on and do that and register, then they will change to registered. And so then you've got those who are pending, who haven't applied, or registered. Uh, and you can do it that way. So th when they when they come to the registration, then yes, that that will change that. Do you yeah. know how to do it by email, rather than say you just want to invite in high-profile guests to uh, some radio evening, but you don't want to have to get into your own register, but to sort of RSVP is there a way of linking it back to them? Probably, the but you didn't have a link in the work form, couldn't you? Oh, you could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You can send them a, so send them a link in that email where they have to click on the uh, link. And that link would yeah. upload the uh, okay. register. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So you could do that. Yeah. So what it makes is your, your users don't have to log in. They'll be posted in last minute email if, you, yeah. if there are any introductions. So the, yeah, they'd have to have an account created. Right. And then if the, so clicking on the link would be like yeah. contact page. Account, uh, uh, contact. Yeah, contact. Yeah, contact. Yeah, yeah. 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 But if you want them to have an account, you, there's a, a feature as well in the events that you can enable account creation in the first place. OK. So you can see back on this, this first page, influence settings, uh, we can include the map there. And as talking about the, the online on screen help, it does tell you there. So to do that, you need to configure a map provider which was that mapping and geocoding place. So again, it's the useful bit. You're at the point of going, I need to include a map. Uh, what do I need? <coughs> Particularly if it's not working. OK, that tells you you need to go and set this other bit up. OK, so that's adding a map in. So let's get to the fun bit of paid events. <coughs> so. Uh, and if you see that, so all we did was come onto this fees tab and say it's a paid event. Okay, so now obviously if you're doing that, you need to set up various different things in terms of how much it is and, uh, and so on. Um, we will enable this pay later option. So we're going to simply check. We haven't got, so if we got, for example, PayPal set up, uh, that would show up on here. And we could just tick the box and say, yes, we'll use PayPal or Stripe or whatever. Um, or we can have this, this pay later option 
if we're doing that, we need to um, <laughs> or pay at the door, <coughs> uh, etc. And you see, these are nice um, formatted boxes. You can make them look pretty and um, all that stuff. You know. um, So we need to set a financial type. Uh, again, event fee looks kind of a reasonable option for this. And then uh, we're going to set this up, and we're going to say adults, 10 pounds, child, six. Um, we'll default it to adult because they probably are. Uh, save. OK. So having saved that bit, huh? if we now uh, come, so let's say then uh, we have somebody ringing up saying, hey, I'd like to come to your event. And uh, we can search for them. We find that they're called, um, how about this one? Uh, this is Alexis Smith. Right, and we're going to add her to our event. So again, we're going to set that. So now down here, note, it's pulled in all that information about you know, the options and the prices and so on. Uh, for this person, uh, we'll say we'll accept that. We can record payment or not. Um, so if they're actually paying now, that would be good. Uh, for this, we will say, uh, OK, they said they're going to send us a check. So that's obviously not completed. That's pending. And we can save that. What would happen if you didn't click with the word pay? So event, event registration and payment are two slightly separate things. <coughs> Uh, so essentially, it's in there without a payment. So if, for example, it's a, it's a, it's a VIP, say, so they wanted to come in that they're an adult in, in that set of options, but they're not paying. So we don't record any payment there. Uh, so they'd be your comps. So they'd be added as registered, but, but would there be a difference in the status? Would they be like registered but not paid? In, in the way we've done this, <clears throat> well, let's take a look. So if we come and look at uh, that wasn't what we wanted, was it? Uh, if we come to manage our events. So down here, if we're looking at our um, participants. So we're seeing, oh, we did a payment for that one, didn't we? Um, OK, but you're seeing the, the, um, the payments in here. So you can see who's paid. So these first people that we registered are effectively the same. So they're, they're registered attendees, but they're not that. You could have a separate status if you wanted for those to do different things. Um, but it's, it's essentially that they, you know, your, your payment and your, civil, your event registration are it would also be great contribution if you register for that. Yep. So let's, let's come back and look at this person who we did that for. Because that, that last screen you're looking at, that would look the same if you put them through as a comp, because you, you would have assigned them as an adult. Yeah. So it would come up and it would say that they were, had been added under that price set, but it wouldn't actually give you an accurate reflection of whether you've got the money or not. You'd have to look elsewhere for that. So you could have an extra price called zero. And if you're doing it from the back end for them, just use the other one. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Got what, what have you got to kind of get it on one screen, right? Right. Um, it means that you. So these registrations uh, were from the back end. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> it is the back end admin deciding it. I would just put zero amount for that VIP. Okay. So or, or if you're doing it online, there are some discounts module. Mm. And even the discount feature, and even, and they, you could actually give them a token. 
which is only valid for the end bit that gives them 100% discount. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> there's, there's a bunch of different change options. Change event attendee to have attended, that on the event page writes out the pending pay later element. They just become attended. So you have to look in your contribution to see if they still need to pay. Because you look at the list and it says pending if they're paying later. Yep. And then if you, after the event you change to who attended, you lose who's pending. So you just find that in the contribution instead of under the event. Okay, so uh, yes, <coughs> there is that. Yes, so uh, so the 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 contribution is still pending. Uh, you're changing the the, the person's the, the participants' status to say that they have attended but the contribution is, is still outstanding. Yeah. So yeah, you then do the, kind of the search on those and say, <clears throat> right, that's the lot to send the bailiffs around to. You know. Yeah. So back to the, to, to take this, so back to the question in terms of, uh, does it create a contribution? Yes, so we see here we've got uh, offline registration and the that payment is pending because we set it to pending the time. So yes, it creates the contribution as well. So if you were doing an event with a suggested donation, you would put it as a fee and then just put a, a payment sort of label one of them as free and then options for like a donation. Ah. Good question. If you want a donation-based one, um, can we do that? We didn't get that question. What's the question? So the, there's the question was, uh, can you have it so that it's it, um, the amount is just a donation rather than a fixed amount? I'm sure the answer must be yes. Um, <laughs> but, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. Sorry? Yeah. You can certainly add a profile, but I think I think so. Price it was has come up a couple of times. Yeah, I think I think price it's the way to go on that one. Um, so with price it, I think we can have fixed prices and the text for text font for open price as well. So they can choose among the listed one, or they can enter their own. Okay. Right. So, so that takes us back to here. So we've got, yeah. So we've got this sort of regular thing, and then as you see here, price set. Um, yes, offer some more options in terms of quite how you set it up. Um, a little bit more complex, but uh, that's a good thing. So let me come to that in just a minute. Um, just to show you down here, we said if you want discounts, you can add in, uh, say, oh, early bird, that'll do, and we set some dates as to when that's applicable. Um, and we add that, and so then it's pulling in uh, this additional, so that's the fees we had. Down here, we've now got the discounted set. So let's say that's I don't know, eight and five. Yeah. Can I ask a so, question what you're about to do? Yes. There's two internal ways to register somebody for an event. One is on the event tab, which you just did, and then yeah. this time you did it from that yeah. drop down menu. Is there any difference? No. Right. Well, webform. Webform. You know, so from on the back end side of things and saying whether you go to uh, the, so whether you come to events and add event or whether you go actions, register event, it's just the same thing. 
Yeah. Did he even ask us if we Yeah, that's also true. Uh, you can uh, register a participant there. So it, different ways. A lot of depends what you've got. So if, if you've got their contact on the screen, you can do that. If, uh, yeah. Is it possible to, uh, I think it is good, you only get a card for the event, or I don't know how you call it in English, but uh, if you have paid. So only if the money comes in, you get a ticket. Tickets for, tickets for the event. Uh, it depends what you mean by the ticket, I suppose, in that, um, so if they're paid, you're gonna, you can send a receipt back for the payment. Um, there's, there's nothing as such that is sending them a ticket. No, but, but we, we did a, a profile on the page that, said that you can say, well, uh, uh, ticket sent, no, the default, and then you uh, have to uh, search for uh, everything as default and make money comes in. Still, an app, uh, a search, a report, or you have to build in a report. You can't au automate that or anything else. It's if you events. Because <coughs> you have still have to not, look up not quite different, sure uh, different information to combine different information to get where you want. I'm not sure I'm quite following what, what you're looking to do there. Yeah. Sorry. Well, uh, somebody registered, yeah. and they say, I will pay later, yeah. and I only will send out the ticket if they have paid, if the money got, uh, came in, right. and then I automatically send out the ticket. Well, okay, so it could be officially a receipt, but you call it on the receipt of ticket. Yeah. Yeah. But then, when you have already sent out the ticket to some, uh, well, you then you check it every day, and then you get uh, people who are already paid get get uh, ten tickets. No, because you you agree. Yeah. You can yeah. do that with city rules, actually. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> that too. <laughs> we just make another yeah. profile to say you had another group of people who have paid and received the ticket. Yeah, but then it's without, well, we come to see the rules then because you don't always want to but there's also rely on human. Is <laughs> that the, the smart group thing? Yeah. So yeah. If, if someone changed their status, then you, mm. they keep dropping off the ones who paid. Yeah. yeah. Or you need somewhere, you know, custom some field to record the fact that you've sent the, the ticket or... Well, what you said about CG rules, you could try to, get to set it up in CG rules. That too, yeah. I think so there's, there's a bunch of different ways. A lot depends exactly what you're trying to achieve there as to, you know, what your criteria. And your volume, yes, that's also true, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is that. There was somebody in the rules. Yeah. Okay. Just conscious time is ticking away with us. Um, that there is an example of a price set. So it gives us a slightly more complex um, set of options. So uh, we can say, okay, so registering for the two days, uh, there's an optional dinner, and then there's an activity choice of go karting or joining the knitting club, and. Um, you know, you choose whichever of those you want. So that's that's the price set option, and um, they're fairly straightforward when you get into those. Uh, okay, so that's that one. We have to get on to rather rapidly um, online registration being one of the biggies. So online registration. Um, Again, most of the defaults are kind of reasonable. Um, you can specify a registration period, you know, <coughs> if they need to, if booking closes two days before the event, for example, you can set that there. Um, again, a lot of this. You, know, you sort of start off by accepting the defaults, seeing what it looks like, 
and then what you want to do with it. So event So we've got now our online registration, which again, same sort of options down here, um, and so on. So that's now created as that. Do, when you're looking at these things, make sure you see what they look like when you're not logged in. So I am logged in, so it's picked up my information. <coughs> uh, so various different ways of doing that. Um, one that's quite good is using the private window facility or incognito so that you're not logged in and then so and you can do it that way so again if you're doing this for real you'd want to probably change it so you haven't got the login box on the left but that, that's back within your Drupal configuration side of things and stuff uh, but in terms of the Civi event itself as you saw it's tick the box enable the registration um, what information we, we gather is part of that. Uh, so that's the registration thing there. Uh, let me close that. And what would happen if um, I've never actually used any sort of public facing profiles? What, what would happen if somebody tried to register and they already extend, they, they already had a, um, a record on, on yep. the system? Would it do some kind of jiggery pokery and Indeed. link them up? So one of the boxes we skipped over down here was the dedupe matching rule. Yeah. <coughs> so, uh, which is back to your, your duplicate matching. So we've got it in the default unsupervised rule there. So that's back in your dedupe rules as to what you're looking at. So if that is, say, first name, last name, email, uh, if those match, then it will take that as, as the existing entry and just add it onto that. Uh, alternatively, it doesn't match, it creates a new contact. So you obviously need to make sure that the information in your dedupe rule matches the information you're asking. So if you only ask for first name, last name, and no email, but you have a dedupe rule that relies on email, clearly nothing's going to match. So uh, make sure they tie up. But yes, it, it does note that they're existing. Yeah. Some of us won't give out date of birth. Exactly. So you might want to have. A, is it worth adding up this sort of unique ID? So let's say, I mean, people can have, can have two different bits, can have two people with the same dates of birth potentially. So you would need something a bit more unique than that. Uh, yeah, and, and there is that thing, isn't it, of what, what does uniquely define. So uh, first name, last name, email is usually a pretty good combination. And you know, some people, maybe spouses, sometimes share an email address. Um, so you probably do want the first name in there as well to make sure. But, but it's also uh, very helpful if they have to fill in their email address twice because they make a typo and then they can oh, yes. uh, add it as a new contact. But they are not a new contact, so they that help us a lot. So they type in the email address twice. Yeah. So having seen the, that example, we're just asking for first name, last name. Uh, that's defined by this profile, your registration information. Um, you'll see we've got various others currently set up. If none of those suit, um, Oh, sorry, for a quick preview of what it looks like, there's that little button. Um, if you want to, it's generally, if you want to change it, it's generally better to copy it rather than edit the existing one because if it's shared between three events and you change the one copy, then it's affecting all three of your events. So <coughs> generally better to, to copy it unless you really know that it's not being used anywhere else. Uh, from here, we can then uh, add in whatever other information we want. We've got a camera school level. Okay, fine. So we'll do that. Um, and it's updated that to be that. So if I come here and refresh that, with a bit of luck, oh, 
not quite enough. Oh, always helps if you save it. <laughs> right, come back there and now refresh that. And now we've got our camera score level. Good, it does work. Um, so you can have <coughs> those there. The whole thing in terms of, of setting up additional profiles, different fields, custom fields, and so on, you can record a bunch of information about that. There are some, um, some events configured within the demo data, uh, which again, you might want to take a bit of a look at. Uh, they've got examples there of custom fields that are set up. I don't, don't think it'll tell you that, no. Yeah. Is the, is the camera skill level a custom field for events? For the event? uh, I'm not sure quite how that one was set up. I just grabbed it, the nearest example. Um, <coughs> uh, but, uh, but if we come back to... So this is showing against individual and volunteer information. <coughs> so in this case, so it's way, it's. We have a lot of custom fields for individuals. So if you go to disabilities, like disabilities and things like that, which when they register, we would like to know that. So if we we could pick those from. from that. Yeah. So so when you create a set of custom fields, <coughs> you're specifying quite what they're for. So they could just be against the individual right. if it's kind of ongoing information, maybe like disability, say. Um, if it's something to do with the particular event you're running, mm -hmm. this one-off event, huh, then you can do it based on the event name. If it's more general, so event type, so we chose meeting as our type, so something that applies to all meetings. <coughs> um, or if you want to do it against a role, so maybe speakers you want particular information about. And you can so, quite a few of these. And there's a field in order to select. So, uh, so you, you <coughs> each of these you set for for that particular type. When you showed um, the camera skill level, mm -hmm. it had individual volunteer. So it was it, it had several different. Um, so if we're looking at that one. That was, it was individual, and the group was volunteer information, yeah, or, or set. And so we take a look at that. That just has, in this case, that one particular um, field in there. <coughs> but we could do... Uh, What are you looking for? So, yeah, so it's an individual address. So was that, were those sub, sub set, so it was the individual and people were also volunteer information for an individual? Is that, were they separate? Let me come back slightly. So you're specifying, um, yeah, what, what that set is, is, is used for. <coughs> uh, so that was the, let me come to adding the custom set here. So that's this bit. Uh, so the volunteer information was set for just on all individuals. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so any contact you looked at on the individual will have that right. set of fields. Sorry? Everybody's an individual, therefore it doesn't deal with everybody else. It, it would, it would, exactly. If you wanted it appear across those as well, then you're using contacts, which is individuals and organizations and households. Right. Okay. So, um, and, and if you choose the participants event type, it restricts that custom field to that particular participant yes. only. So so we can say it only applies. So it wouldn't appear on the, on the other individual. Yeah. That's fine, yeah. I think it's good. Yeah. 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 
unfortunately, I'm still using the old version. Okay. I don't think the old version I've got has those facilities. So that's a good, good question because many people have this confusion with the custom fields because of the variety. Yeah. 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 Okay. I so I I think I think our time has gone, but um, I'll be around if you have any questions. <clears throat>